Hello all you lovely beaters out there. I have another tutorial for you today and this one is the Mermaid Wave Bracelet. Um, very elegant but you can wear this with anything. It's so pretty. I'm not going to do it up because I can't do up lobster claws, clasps by myself. But it does fit and the measurements I'm going to give you, the quality quantity I'm going to give you is mostly for a size hmm, 8 bracelet maybe. Let me just get my trusty old ruler out and let's measure this guy. So yeah, it's a size 8 bracelet, but the inner part is a size 6. So you can make this smaller by just putting less beads up here or doing a different way of closing off your bracelet rather than doing it the way I did it because this gave it an extra two inches with the, the lobster closure and this. So you might want to keep that in mind. So these parts here are six inches long in the middle and these are our additional um, inches. So for this I used um, well, let's start with the seed beads. I used three colors of seed beads. And this one is a red violet Mayuki seed bead in 11-0 dyed silver line in a nice beautiful purple color. And this one's a pale violet lined crystal AB Mayuki in another nice little purple color. And of course, the uh, Union seed beads in full Labrador. So Labrador full and 11 -0 with the check coating. <clears throat> I used uh, fire polish in a aqua sea foam. I used Preciosa 4mm bicones in Crystal AB. And I used Potomac's mini round duos for the closure here. Now, like I said, you don't have to do it this way. You can finish off your bracelet whatever way you want because each one of these pieces are individual anyway. So I'm going to go and dump some beads and I'm going to get started. And oh, where's my needles? I kind of need, oh, right here. Jeez. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a size 10 beading needle, but you can use whatever size you want. I'm using size 10 and 6 pound fire line. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so got my coffee, got my beads poured, and we're ready to start our mermaid wave bracelet. So, I strung on a comfortable length of fire line. This is a six pound fire line, so just a comfortable length that you uh, don't mind working with. And let's move our stuff over here. Let's get in frame, and maybe I'll come up a wee bit more. All right, so to get started, oops, I forgot to dump out crystals. You need crystals. Dump a few of these little babies out because they're so pretty. And the first thing you're going to pick up is a four millimeter bicone. And then whatever color you're working with. So I'm going to pick up for the sake of the video. I'm only doing a sample piece, but my uh, end piece will be on the actual bracelet. So pick up four, or sorry, three seed beads in whatever color you're doing. Let's use the darker ones so you can see. Okay, so you have this. Bring those down, and then you're going to go through. You're going to leave yourself a tail. I'd say, I don't know, six, eight inches, whatever you want. And you're going to go right through all these beads again, forming a circle. Whatever you do, don't tie any knots in your project. All right. Now you're going to come through. You're at. You're coming out of your crystal. You want to go into that middle seed bead. If you want to do uh, another round, go ahead. But you'll be going through these beads uh, again, so I wouldn't fret over it. So, oops, we need to go through the middle seed bead, so the middle of the four. It's going to be wonky at first, of course, it always is, 
all right now you're going to just continue to do right angle weave picking up three seed beads coming out here you're going to go back in through the same way you're coming out and you're going to put these three on now you're going to turn it if you're right-handed and you're going to go up through two seed beads so the side bead and the top bead like so so i'm coming i like i said it's going to be wonky at first but keep your work pulled as tight as possible okay keep that pulled as tight as you can and look at how wonky that looks <laughs> all right now you've got one two pick up three more seed beads coming out here go right back in that same bead and now you've put on your third uh, unit so go back up the side bead into the middle bead exit out of that middle bead I'm telling you it looks really wonky but it always is when you first do this so when you look at your work okay I'm going to just try to straighten these beads out as best as I can so you can have an idea when you look at your work you should have one two three center beads that means you had done three right angle weave units okay so we have one two three now this is where you're going to pick up a seed bead a four millimeter crystal and a seed bead and you're just going to make another revolution of going around right through and now you want to be exiting out of your four millimeter crystal so turn your work around go back up the side bead like so and then into the four millimeter crystal like that okay there you go now you're going to continue with doing three more red angle weaves only picking up three seed beads flipping your work around and then going through the first two beads and that will always put you in the center okay pick up three seed beads go right back through that bead the center bead like so like so see give it a good tight pull now that's what you want to do is keep your work pulled very tight and pinched in your finger if you can oopsies I'm picking up and I never got into my center bead and I've done that lots through making this bracelet so it's easily to do so I always give it a good tight pull and then I'm going to pick up three more if it will let me coming out of that middle bead I'm going to go right back in it giving this a good tight pull <clears throat> there you go now let me come closer so you can see this one last time I don't want to be that close I don't think okay hopefully it focuses <clears throat> I need to show you the three center beads so let me get my needle up and go through the two beads that I'm supposed to so I'm going through the side bead and I'm in this center bead here at the top all right ready to do, put on another red angle weave so in the middle here you should have one two three middle beads one two three center beads three down the side and three down this side so that's when you know it's time to put on whatever four millimeter crystal you're going to use I'm using bicones but you can use any four millimeter crystal you want you can even use a druck bead you don't have to or a pearl okay so you just want to go through there get back up into your crystal and I usually do this in one pass because I can't stand pulling my thread constantly. 
All right. So try to center that, give it a good tight pull and pull straight out of that bicone so you don't cut your thread. You see? And then you're just going to continue this for the length of your bracelet. Now, let me tell you something. Here's my finished piece that we'll be working on. If you notice, let me move this out of the way. If you noticed, here's a finished one. Here's a non-finished one. It is longer. Whoops, you can't even see that. Let me back up. Sorry about that. You see this? This one is the length that I need. This is my six inch piece here. All right. If you don't want to make it that long, just leave out a section. But I have 15 bicones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Once I completed my 15 bicones, when I have a bicone on each end, then I stop. When I stop, my bracelet is this much longer. But when we put our side beads in, that's going to tighten this whole thing up. So this is what it's going to look like when you put all your beads on. All right, because it's nice and, and loose like this. But we're going to end up pulling it a little bit tighter as we, we join it. So you can see where I've ended here. All right, so I have... And one thing I want to tell you is please do not cut any threads off because you don't want any knots in here because we have to go through these beads again and you don't want any knots in these. So just leave this tail and all these threads hanging till the end of the bracelet. You have no problem after going through those beads, tying them off and knotting them and burning them. So don't do any knots or any burning or anything like that. Now, when you join it, if you run out of thread and you've got to join it, okay, I'm getting all tangled here. I've got two things here on the go. <clears throat> um, which one is this one? This is my little one. We're going to put you off to the side because we're going to work on this one now. But it's all caught up in everything. It's caught up in scissors, tweezers, you name it. It's getting snagged and everything. All right, now... When you join threads, which I had to join in my bracelet, all I did was, where did I put it? I can't even see it now because the threads went inside. Uh, but I did tie them in a really, I didn't use a double knot or anything like that. So don't use um, big knots in between these seed beads. So I went into a middle bead like this where my tail was coming out, wherever I ran out, I went back into that bead, so I had both my tails out this way. I tied a small little knot and went through the needle, uh, went through the beads, and then I pulled that knot inside of this middle bead, but I kept the knot really small. So don't make big knots, okay, because you're going to cuss and swear at me because you're not going to be able to get through your beads. So like I said, you've got this wonky piece. Now it's all done. Um, here is my other two pieces. And again, I left whatever tail was hanging off of this, I left it. Because we're going to use all this thread to join all of our three pieces. So remember, you need three pieces, exact same size. And that's what's going to happen to this one when we put those silver side beads in there. It's going to pull that all in nicely and it's going to be snug like this piece here, these pieces here. So bear with me. All right. So I think I have to. Ah, okay. So this is where I'm going to show you how to put on thread. Right. All right. I'm going to move these out of the way for now. And I'm just going to move this over here so it doesn't get all tangled and I'm gonna put I'm not this one here is definitely not gonna be long enough so I'm just gonna leave this hanging out not cutting it not doing anything with it um, I do want to come through the crystal though because the crystals seem to have a bit bigger hole maybe than uh, the seed bead I don't know maybe not um, okay, let's do this. I need a needle. Let's pull this out of that crystal. And let's pull it out of this side bead. 
I don't know why I went up in that side bead anyway. All right. So you can see I want to stay in the middle bead here. I'm in this coming out of this middle bead where I just finished my last round. So let me get a nice hunk of thread. Enough to go all the way around because we don't need to leave that much of a tail at the end because <clears throat> we have a nice long thread on that long at that dark purple one. So we don't need to have more more there. So let me just thread this needle quickly and I'm going to show you how I've been adding thread. Just because it's way um, less knots and right now you don't want to deal with knots. Get your bracelet finished and then tuck in all your ends. I know it's and if the if the, the tails are too long just trim them off a little bit but don't don't uh, don't trim them too short that you can't get your needle through and then start tying off on your bracelet so holy cow does not want to flatten out there we go I could feel a bubble on the end of it like a bump and that's what's preventing it from going in this needle All right, I'll try it the old-fashioned way, but I never can do it this way. I don't know why I always have problems with this. See? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and my pliers are over there. I'm going to have to go get them because I think that'll work better. It'll really flatten this nicely if I don't get it in. And I'm not going to get this in. It's a bump on the end of it and I don't know why my scissors did that. Is there a reason it's not going in here? Because I can see it's flat. All right, I'll be right back. Holy henna, that was nasty to get on. All right, let's show you how I'm doing this. All right, so I'm coming out of that bead there, right? But I want my tail to be on this side so I can tie a little tiny knot. So I'm going to pull my needle in the opposite direction of that tail so I can have my tail hanging out over here. Okay, so they're both together here. So now let's tie a nice little tiny knot and let's do right over left so you put the right thread over the left thread and you come in and you give it a little pull holding this all right and then you you put left over right and it's going to be a little bit hard left over right and we're just going to make a little tiny skinny box knot nice and tight and give it all a nice tight pull holding all three strands of your thread all right so let's pull that knot inside and that's what's going to happen now and you can see these are way too long this one here so I'm going to trim it off I'm going to just leave it long enough that I can re-thread the needle on it and get rid of those ends Alright, so we are coming out here, pulling this nice and tight, holding that in my hand. And now you want to be exiting, going towards this way of your bracelet. So right now my thread's going out this way, in this middle bead. Let me come closer. Okay, my thread's in this middle bead. I need to go up the side bead, following my th thread path into the crystal and down in this side bead here. So you want to be going towards your beadwork in that direction. Okay. This is going to be a little bit loose just till you get your, your threads going here. And now what you want to do is you're coming out of the bottom of that bead 
towards your beadwork. You're going to pick up a silver bead or whatever accent bead you want to use and you're going to go right down into the next side bead like so and put that bead in place. Okay. Pick up another silver bead go down into the next bead. Now be very careful because I've done it myself be very careful you do not skip. What I like to do is just hold this over my finger like this that way it spreads these open and you're not going to skip a bead because I've done it and I've had to pull the whole side out because I've skipped one side bead. So pick up a silver bead go into the next side bead like that. Pick up a silver bead or accent bead, whatever bead you're using. And this just keeps getting smaller and smaller and I got to keep pulling it out. Because like I said, I just made the world's tiniest knot to prevent. This will all get pulled in nicely when um, I want to pull it into the bead right now. <clears throat> when we get it all tied off in the end. All right. So continue this, just going down your rows, putting in an accent bead, and going into the next bead. If you put it over your finger like this, you'll be sure not to skip. So I just move it along. You'll be sure not to skip one of those side beads, and believe me, I've done it several times. Okay, so... Um, Keep going all the way down to the end. When you get to the other end, you're going to just go around the same way you did here. See how pretty that is now? And it's starting to take shape of your right angle weave. When you get to your other end, just come out your crystal, put your last bead in, come out your crystal, and go down this side. Okay? And I'll come back, meet you back here when we have all of that done. And then we can get started on putting our bracelet together. So you need to do one light color. And that's what I did. And two dark colors. And But you can do color choices whatever way you want. You do not have to do it the way I do it. I just liked it uh, because when I put my crystal beads in the middle here, uh, these stood out really nicely as opposed to them standing out on the dark. So I just thought the light was really pretty to have a little darker color sitting on top like that. See? Putting it on the dark, it kind of camouflages. So that's why I made one light purple and two dark purple. So my two outer ones are the dark purple. And I'll be back after I get all these pretty little silver side beads put in and we'll continue with the bracelet. Okay, so we've got it all done. Now, um, when you get to the end of your bracelet, you're gonna, if, if you pull this bracelet way too tight, it will, it will do this. Okay? It'll just be wonky. What you want to do is get all of your bracelets. This one here needs to be pulled a little bit more tighter. You need to go on this side and pull up some of these beads just to pull your thread tighter so it does not cut your fire line. Now, because your beads will, you just give it a nice little tight pull and then you just flatten it out so all three of your pieces are the same. As you can see, this one's still a bit longer and they should all be the same. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to go to this end, pull, out, pull up on this bead and tighten it on the other side. So it does not cut my my thread through that crystal. So just pull your thread. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Pull it nice and tight on this side and then yank it on tight on here. Like so. So that your bracelets, everything is the same size. This here is a perfect. Okay, so now I'm at exact sizes on all three of my beautiful right angle weave pieces. Now I'm going to tie this one off that I'm working on. <coughs> and I'm tangled up here. Oh boy. Let's not get tangled, please. I need this. 
get out of my way for now. I'm coming out here, so I'm just going to go work my way down here, and I'm just going to do a quick, just because I don't want this to keep coming loose, I want it to stay nice and flat, like so. Just put it down before you tie that knot, because once you tie that knot, it's it's done. So I am going to tie it with one of the threads that I've got hanging out here. I'm going to tie it very carefully that I don't pull it too tight where I warp my bracelet. So don't warp it. Whoops. Just be very gentle with the knots, okay? And for now, I'm going to leave all these ends, trim that off, pull this needle off, and we're good with this piece for now. Okay, because I don't want my bracelet warped. So this is how we're going to put these together. Two dark ones and the light one in the middle. So let me grab the needle now because I know I have a needle here. Well, I did have a needle. Oh no, I pulled the needle off. Right. Okay, so let me thread the needle on here now. Uh, you can also... Um, Hmm. Anyway, we're just going to do it this way. Let me pull this needle off. I don't need to grab another needle. <clears throat> Gosh, I don't need a ton of needles. And all these threads are going to drive you crazy. I know. They drive me nuts. But they're for good reason. thread this. Hopefully the little luck. It'll go through. And it did. First try. Okay. All right. <clears throat> oh, we need some round duos. These are the mini round duos <clears throat> in um, aluminum. From These are exclusive to Potomac V Company. And we need some fire polish out and all the, the amounts that I use will be in the description box below so when I finish this bracelet <clears throat> again be very careful you can see I have threads hanging out because I need to burn those be careful you don't warp your bracelet when you're pulling your threads so you need to get into that um, four millimeter crystal all right and then you're going to pick up 11 o silver whatever color you want a round duo and then you're going to go into this one and I'm going to do it on this side and you're going to go through the crystal on there placing it on here like so oopsies sorry 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 I forgot a 11 o Oh, I knew that was going to happen. I never have any luck putting my needle back through a bead without doing this. Please don't tell me I have to take that whole thing off. There we go. You need an 11 out. Then you're going to go through the crystal. <coughs> like that. So this is what you have so far. You have 11 out. A round duo, 11 0. Do the same thing. Pick up an 11 0, a mini round duo, an 11 0. And then you're going to pick up your other purple one. Like so. Okay, so now turn your bracelet. You have all three pieces. Make sure you don't tangle this. Or twist it in any way shape or form now I've got my round duels where the second hole is up here you need to pick up two 11 O's a round duo and you're gonna go into the second hole of these round duos 
I'm in the second hole and it will pull loose but hold on to your bracelet nice and tight and then give this all a good tight pull together and I'm holding it squeezing it tight like so now you're going to pick up 11 -0, a round duo and 11 -0, and you're going to go right into the next hole the second hole of the round duos you see let me come up a little closer Hopefully I stay in frame. Into the second hole of the round duo like so. Okay? And then give it a good tight pull. All of it. Give, give it a good snuggy tight pull. Now you're going to pick up oops, a round duo. Two 11 O's. And you're going to go back into the crystal in this direction on the second round, or, or on the third one over. So I'm still going across, and we're just going to complete this nice and tight. Pull it nice and tight. Now you do have to go through all of these beads again. So let's go through all. It's just follow your thread path. Don't don't create another one. Follow your thread path going through the the 11 the round duo and keep it pulling it tight round duo the crystal pulling it tight so you do have to go through all of these again and there will be some more traveling that you have to do as well to complete this end piece and then back into the crystal, like so. And now we've went all the way through. You should have it should be nice and tight now. It should be nice and snug. Get into these two two beads here. Your two side beads that you put on. Give it a good tight pull. Pick up two more 11 O's and go into the second hole of that second round of beads, like so. Okay. Now here and here, you're not picking up any seed beads, you're just going to put your round duo on and you go straight into the next round duo into that second hole, like this, and giving this a good tight pull. Pick up another round duo, and go into this one like so good 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 tight pull all right now you're going to pick up two seed beads and you're just going to drop down into this one into those two placing those two seed beads on the outside like that so this is what you should have now okay now you want to travel through these beads one more time. Like I said, we're going to be doing a lot of traveling, but it is a good way to reinforce this as well. And this is one reason why you don't want to tie a whole whack of knots. Something is preventing me from coming out of this round duo. There we go. Okay, pull down into the seed bead. I'm following my very last rows. See? Again, traveling through. I can grab that seed bead. I did. Perfect. All right. Up into there. Now you want to go through these four seed beads on the side pick up two more seed beads and go into this second hole of the round duel here okay I'm in the second hole and this is where you're going to put your last round duel on and you're going to go right into this next one here dropping that round duel right there and give it a good tight pull and then pick up two seed beads 
and this time you're only going to go down two seed beads because we can't go through that another time these ones here because we have to go one more time now you're just going to use your thread path in the second hole of this first row you put on so just follow what I'm doing going into this second hole of this first row these two so if you just follow your thread path you will see where you need to be like so and you're only going to be able to go through like one bead at a time kind of thing so there down in the seed bead down into the round duo whoops am I still in frame sort of down into the seed bead and into the round duo like that <coughs> See? I'm in that second hole of the first set of round duos we put on and then you go through your round duo then you go up your two seed beads here like so so it looks like this now you're going to pick up two seed beads and you're going to go into this hole again at the very top now here's where you're going to pick up let me move some stuff out of the way here <clears throat> this is where you're going to pick up where your um, closure is going to fit on so your your um, what do you call it jump ring is going to go or your or your lobster closure whatever whatever it is okay now you're going to pick up you can pick up whatever color you want and because I like it I'm going to pick up the purple so I'm going to pick up one two three four five six seven eight I'm going to pick up eight and I'm going to go right back through that same hole at the top that I'm coming out of making this cute little loop like that go through them again through them again you can even get away with six beads you don't have to put eight one thing I do want to tell you though when you're making this bracelet don't use different different company beads so what I mean by that is don't use Mayuki with Toho or Chak with Toho use all the same brand of beads because you're going to end up with different lengths in here and that was one of my very first problems I encountered when I was creating this bracelet I used one in a nice beautiful color of teal in a Toho seed bead and then the other two I made with my Yuki I had to redo the whole thing okay so I think that's good and secure now you're still you're coming out of this hole again you're gonna pick up two seed beads you're gonna go right down into these ones like so now you can see they're all nicely snug around there so what we're going to do is go straight down here back to the very beginning round carefully going through all these beads again the crystal the 11 the round duo and you want to try and catch that 11 on the other end if you can because you're going to have a hard time getting it i think and i don't think i can grab spit don't think it's going to let me go through it but anyway it's not even gonna let me go through at all let's there we go <clears throat> just have to move the beads out of the way so you want to get right over to the other side like this there we go all right and then you want to go up these beads again and get them all straightened out here <coughs> pulling them <coughs> sorry nice and tight sorry I keep getting out of frame let me back up because I hate getting out of frame so I'm just going through all these side beads 
nice and tight. Pulling all of this work nice and tight, go across in here, like so. And they should sit nice on the each on the edge. And then just go down. And this is where you're going to tie off up in here. So I'm going to tie off on this row here. So I'm going to go between two beads because we don't have to go back up in there. And I'm going to make a surgeon's knot, of course. Pull it nice and tight. Go down through three beads. Put another knot. And wrap it twice, your needle twice around that loop. Okay, and down in three more beads. Like so. There we go. This will be my third and final knot. Pull it nice and tight. And then I'm just going to run it through some beads here. So, and then I'm cut it off and burn it. But I'm not burning it right now. I'll wait. And now what you did over here, you want to repeat the same. Oops, see this got pulled? Shoot. Don't want to pull it now because I'm going to break it. But anyway, that'll be fine. That's what I meant by be very careful you don't warp your bracelet. All right, you're going to go over on this side, you're going to add new thread here, and you're going to repeat over here what I did, or you're going to repeat over here what I did here, okay? I really don't like how I pulled that so tight. Darn it. I should have been watching. I was telling you guys a hundred times not to do what I did, and I do it. Anyway, it's not going to ruin it. All right, so I'm going to go do this off camera. Repeat this over here and make sure none of your strands are twisted so now this is not even matching up with that so that's why you want to be very very careful guys very very careful you don't warp your bracelet like I did here yeah it's kind of warped I should have been paying mind to it all right, there's no way of fixing that unless I break the thread, and I ain't doing that again. So, anyway, keep it flat, and then start picking up all your beads. It might be all right once we get the other end on it, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I have both of my ends done. Um, you're going to wonder what this is. I just taped up all these loose ends so I don't get my thread tangled in this because it just drives me crazy with all those threads hanging. Now, what you need to do is you coming, you went down your side and you're coming out of this side bead. You just want to get over into this inner bead here. Sorry, this one here. So go down here. Whoa. That almost cut my thread. And you can see my bracelet's a little bit wonky here because of that one being pulled tight and this one being looking like it's too big now. But that, that won't show. Once this is all wrapped around your wrist, hopefully, you won't see that. So, you see, it'll be just fine, guys. It'll be just fine. All right. Now, I need to be going up. So I'm going to go down here to, if you see where your crystal is, you need to be on the third bead up from your the one coming out beside your crystal here. All right, you need to be on that one. But I'm in the wrong direction. So I think I'm going to go straight across if I can, if I still can get through these beads. So I can be going in an upward direction. And I'm just using my thread that I have left. I didn't cut my thread off on this side, on this end. I'm going to go through those, through the seed bead, through the round duel, sticking with my thread path. 
Am I already coming out of that seed bead? I just need to get in the round deal. Like that. So I'm just getting these tails out of my way because they really and truly drive me crazy. All right, so I need to get over like this. I'm going to go down. One, two, three, four seed beads on the side. So I'm coming out of a purple, a dark purple seed bead. All right. And then I'm going to follow, I'm going to go through the middle bead, staying within that right angle weave path. You can see I have um, tails I need to burn, which I have not done yet. I don't want any knots because like I said you're going to be going through these beads and then you want to be in the, see where the crystal is and there's a seed bead beside it you want to be on the one the third silver bead so count one two and you want to be in this one here right there so let's go up it in the purple in the silver in the purple and then back into that silver one. So you're coming out here like that. And you're on the inside inside part of this, okay? I'm on this side in the middle of my work. Now you're just going to be using your crystals and your fire polish. These are the only two beads you're going to be needing right now. So you're going to that's it anyway. Pick up three 11 O's, one of your fire polish, and three 11 O's. Okay. I'm coming up here. I'm going to go directly across, and if you can't see where your, your bead is, count from the, the, the crystal here. Count one, two, three, and you want to go down in that silver bead that you put on in that direction like that. Okay, and come across like this. Now you want to be in this crystal here, or not in the crystal, in the bead beside your crystal. So all you have to do is go straight down, straight down, till you hit there. Now you're going to follow your purple bead path. You're going to follow your bead path. You're going to go in the middle bead, trying to do this. It's kind of hard on camera. You want to go into this middle bead, following your, your thread path of your right angle weave. You want to go down into the next side bead of the purple one and then into the crystal and then just get into this silver bead here, right there. All right, like that. Now your next row, you're going to pick up three, five, eight. You're going to pick up eight of your 11 O's. You went over top of this middle one. Now you're going to go underneath this middle bracelet. You're going to go underneath and you're going to snag the bead on this side here. Snag it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't go up. Go over. Oh, geez, I'm really confusing you guys. I'm so sorry. Go underneath this and you want to go down, not up. Okay? You want to go down that bead so it's underneath. Oh, geez, look where I went. Second one road. <laughs> I'm really mucking up, aren't I, guys? I'm so sorry. I'm so epic fail. I was like, what's with the big space? You want to go down this one here. Okay. And I'm just going to go through three beads. The silver one, the purple one, and the silver one. Okay. So now we have this row underneath, this row on top. Oh shoot, I probably was out of frame. Oh, God. All right, let me do this again. 
Now I want to go across here because I need to be coming out of this middle bead here. Well, not the middle bead. Where do I need to be here? Right. Well, it doesn't really matter. <coughs> okay. Pull this tight. Okay. I am coming out of, if you count, one, two, I'm coming out of this one, but I'm going down in this direction. Now you're going to pick up three seed beads, a fire polish, three seed beads, you're going to go over top of this middle one now and go directly below. Whoops, we're not we're not in position. Right. I need to go down one more silver bead. Sorry guys. I'm really screwing this up. Aren't I? There we go. Let me check this now. So there should be two beads between each row. All right. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with Crisco. Now we could pick up our three, our fire polish, and three more seed beads. Alright. I'm coming down, so that means I have to go up. So from your crystal, count one, two, or count two beads and go up two to there. And I'm going up now. Because I want these to lay straight across. Oh. Like that. You know what, I think I only put seven beads in here because that was too um, loose. Let me just check this. I am really screwing this up royally. I can't remember now because I took the other one apart. Yeah, I think I only put seven across. Okay, so I'm going to back out. Pull my needle off, it's just a lot easier. Get you back on here. And I'm going to pull one seed bead off because I think we only need seven. Eight was too much. Let me just try this. So, this is see how easy it is to pull out your mistakes, but not those serious ones you can't. All right, let me just check and see if I like that better. Yes, I do. Okay, so let's re thread this. All right, so I'm coming up, which means I have to go down this bead. I'm going to go down one, two. I want to be in the bead, the second bead from that crystal. So one, two, three, four. I'm in the fifth bead. So pull that. Oh, shoot. I bet you I went over top without going under. Let's have a look what I did. No, I went under. Okay, thank God. So remember, that one goes underneath. The straight row with no crystal goes underneath. The one with the crystal goes on top. So now we'll pick up our three. The crystal. And the three. We're going across here. From your crystal, you want to count two beads and go into that second bead. Now I'm coming out at the bottom, which means I have to enter this bead up through the this way. So they're both sitting flush across with each other like this. And then you just work your 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 path, go around your beads here in your center bead and just work your way down. See how much better that is? Work your way down until you are in the silver bead no matter which direction you're going in up or down you just got to make sure you be careful when you're um, putting your next row on all right so now we're gonna pick up seven beads because we're at that point now six seven you're gonna go underneath your thread under underneath the middle bracelet and you're going to go up this one 
and I'm going to go in that purple bead because I'm going to wrap it around. I'm going to go around in the circle to so I'm headed back down this bracelet. And then you have that. Now you go into the middle bead, giving everything a good tight pull. And I'm just going to go down a few beads. <clears throat> no rhyme or reason. And I need to be in that middle second bead or what from each either end of the crystal. You want to be in that second bead from the crystal. So let me show you up close so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to bring this up. All right. Here's a crystal and here's a crystal. You want to be in this middle bead between your crystals. Okay? This middle bead here. All right? So it looks like this. So you're going to pick up three Levinos of fire polish. And these are four millimeter fire polish. Three Elevenos. My thread here is coming out of the bottom of this one. You want to go across now and you're going to go up. But make sure you're in the right bead. Hold your bracelet like this. See the crystals. You should have three beads in between these crystals. Here. Whoops. Geez, I'm so terrible today. Three beads between these crystals. Three of these silver ones. I'm coming out, which means I have to go up into that third bead. Like that. See? Up. And place that right there. Now you just go straight across in this, the middle bead here. Like that. Pulling everything nice and tight. Work your way down so that you are coming out of the bead where the crystal is. So I'm going across into the crystal and I'm going up in this seed bead here on the side. Like so. Alright. Pick up seven. Seven, okay. Coming out of here, across from the crystal, go underneath this piece, go underneath your middle one, and you go down this bead here. And I might hit a couple of beads, but you need to go down. So they sit straight across, and that's how that's going to look. Okay, it's just really, really pretty actually. I really love how this middle one moves around in here, like so. Okay, so I hope you understand what I've showed you. I've got to burn off all of these ends. Now that I've completed all this, I can burn everything off. I can trim all these off because I won't be coming back over here with a needle and a thread. So I'm going to continue doing this. We'll do one more time. Continue doing this. So I kind of like to hold it draped over my finger like this. I just find it way easier and I line up these crystals here. I'm not lining up the middle ones. Don't worry about the middle beads here. It's these ones you want to line up. Okay, so I'm coming out of that crystal. Or no, I'm coming out of the seed bead. I need to be in the middle one. So one, two, three beads are between these rows. Don't count the one beside your crystal. Count the three in the middle. You want to be coming out of that third bead. So I'm going to go down here till I'm exiting out of that middle bead like that. Okay, you see? And now we're going to place our fire polish. So you're going to pick up three seed beads, your fire polish, and three seed beads. You're going to go across, count the third bead up if you use the crystal. Don't count this one, count one. Or sorry, the second bead up. It's the middle bead of the three. Go up it, like that. 
and then I just go into this middle bead here beside where I'm coming out go into the purple bead and I go down a few beads <clears throat> and then I just swing across this way and then I just get into position here right beside the crystal and I'm going down like that. Now I'm going to pick up seven Seven. going across but underneath the bracelet in the middle <clears throat> coming at the bottom which means I have to go up to get it to be perfectly straight underneath in line all right guys continue that right till you have your bracelet finished this is a really gorgeous bracelet guys I showed you that it at the beginning of it it is very sparkly and it kind of looks like a mermaid wave. The colors are very pretty. These purple colors and the teal are very pretty. So all you need left to do, I'm not going to come back after I finish this because I'm just taking this bracelet apart, um, is you put on your lobster closure. You need two jump rings and one lobster closure. You're just going to put whatever closure, you can put a toggle clasp on that. Um, do I have one handy? No. But I do have pliers handy. So you just want to get your, your uh, jump rings, whatever size jump rings you're using. Let me back off a little. Whatever size jump rings you want to use, you're going to put that on this end. You're going to attach your, clo your closure, whatever piece, if you're using a toggle, a swing, swivel closure like so. And you're just going to close this up like so and make sure you hear it touch the metals touch click like that and close it up and then you're just going to put your other one on so you might as well finish up your bracelet that is so pretty guys i can't even tell you and the back is beautiful as it as also and you know because look these are these are resting this middle one uh, are resting on these rows of seed beads that you put in here on the back so it just kind of looks like a little mermaid package it's so pretty I just love it <clears throat> so that's that so I really really hope you learned how to make this and I didn't screw it up too much I am so out of practice I really need to smarten up what I'm doing I made a lot of mistakes in this um, bracelet showing you guys a tutorial but then again you're gonna make the same mistakes I did so that's how I fix them it's just that's why I don't edit any of this out anyway thank you all so much for uh, watching my tutorial and if you make this bracelet make sure you post pictures on my Facebook group and I'll see you guys real soon God bless Mwah. bye everyone